We're at the uh, National Forensic Academy, and what I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you is how to use a non-magnetic fingerprint powder to possibly develop latent fingerprints. One of the first things we want to do, uh, the application of this, um, if we're going to process, the surface is very important, and normally we'll do this, we'll use a non-magnetic uh, powder if we have a nice smooth surface. For a rough surface, something like that, we'll select a uh, magnetic powder. When you take a brush out, a new brush, this is a new fiberglass brush that has just numerous uh, filaments, this is not the way we want the brush to appear when we get ready to load it with powder. So this is the way it comes out when it comes out of these containers. This is also how we recommend that you store them, store them back in the same container that it came in. But when you take this out, you take the brush and you're just going to kind of break it in by taking it and spinning it like this. And once we do that, we want this thing to open up and appear more like a more like a dome. Now we're starting to get the appearance, the shape that we want. And I don't quite like the way that looks. So if I could just spin it a little bit more, uh, that may uh, help keep the powder. It'll adhere to these filaments, but it won't clump up so much, and it'll be more evenly distributed. But we're going to take uh, take the brush like that. I'm just going to lay it down for a second, and I'm going to take a little bit of this. Um, non-magnetic powder and I would take a spoon this is like a sterile spoon or a clean spoon and I'm going to put a little bit of powder in this cup and after I use this it's just a small amount of powder and after I use it I'm not going to put this powder back in to the to this original container just because of any type of contamination issues they also make these brushes that are disposable they have one-time application use, and then you can get rid of them if you're worried about any type of DNA or cross-contamination. But if we're primarily just processing for uh, fingerprints, that's not such a consideration we'd reuse this brush. And occasionally people will tell, um, when they're teaching people how to load a brush, they actually have this brush uh, taken and placed down into this original jar. This is not a good reason because of the contamination issues. The other reason is it continues to compact the powder in the jar, and that's not what we want to happen. So if we take that out, put a small amount of powder into the cup, and we take the brush and put it into the, into the cup like this and just lightly tap it, and then we're going to take that and we're going to spin it, raise it up off of the bottom, and I'm going to spin it by doing that. And then when this brush, with this brush like this, I'm going to tap the edges. Now I've got more than enough powder on this new brush to process quite a large area. I'm going to take it, and, and techniques vary. Some people like to spin a brush. Some people like to, um, to actually move the brush back and forth like this. I'm just going to spin it a little bit like this and go across this surface. And what we have is the development of some latent prints. Latent prints mean that they were invisible initially, and after processing, we now have the development of these prints. Now, we don't want an excess, uh, excessive amount of powder on there. You may be able to see this. If not, we'll get a little closer view of it in a minute. But now we have a nice black print on this smooth surface. So what this is, this is reacting to the sebaceous material in the print. And you, you can notice that there's no excess powder on the areas that were actually not touched. So this gives us very good information for an examiner to use. Another thing they make, this is a piece of equipment that is uh, uh, actually used for uh, lightly uh, putting a little bit of air pressure on electronic equipment. We also use this to simply blow any excess powder off. This gets used uh, typically a little bit more with uh, um, the magnetic powders, but that's what we do with this. We wouldn't dare blow on this because then we're, we're imparting our DNA on it if that became an issue, so that's why we use that squeeze bulb. But that's how we process using a non-magnetic uh, powder. It's good on these very smooth surfaces, and we, we're, uh, our comparison is going to end up uh, with a black print on a white background. Uh, that's what we're looking at uh, for the comparison purposes. So it's always nice to create a nice black print on a white background uh, initially. So we, we like to use black powder quite often.